Good morning and welcome to our daily reflection. Researching my family tree these past years involved spending a lot of time in various cemeteries. And it's amazing the information on gravestones from hundreds of years ago. Apparently there is an old gravestone which says, remember friend, as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, soon you shall be. So prepare for death and follow me. Predictively, someone had added underneath, to follow you I'm not content until I know which way you went. Now, although there are, although we are a bit more open than our parents or grandparents, death is still one of those things we still feel uncomfortable talking about. We can plan our funerals, but it can be difficult explaining those things with our families. As I set readings for today, set, said nothing to me. I've chosen those verses from Luke chapter 16. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered in sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, because I am, I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place, so that anyone who wants to go from here to, to you cannot, nor can anyone cross from there to us. He answered, I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not come also to this place. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone goes from the dead to them, they will repent. He said to them, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. These verses seem to confirm the existence of another of those things we find hard to talk about, what happens after or in the words added to that old gravestone, to follow you I am not content until I know which way you went. But what does the Bible itself say about the subject? To be honest, not a lot. During the Old Testament period, the dead were thought to go to Sheol, literally the grave, where the dead reside. Sheol is simply a synonym for tomb or grave. It's not the place where someone actually went. There was never a sense from the ancient Hebrew scriptures that you died and went to heaven, not heaven as we have come to think of it. People didn't die and go to God, they died and joined the dead in the grave. Resurrection was nothing new to the Old Testament readers either. One of the earliest hints came to the book of Daniel. Many of those bodies lie dead and buried, will rise up, so some to everlasting life and some everlasting shame. More familiar today would be the conversation Jesus had with Martha. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, I know even now that God will give you whatever you want. Jesus answered her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. To rise at the last day was the expect, expect, expectation of the Jews at that time. Jesus would promise something better through his own death and resurrection because he left his disciples saying he had to go and prepare a room for them in his father's house, a house that had many rooms. Now you might think that karma had finally caught up with this rich man. Maybe you, you might think it unfair. Why shouldn't God grant this man his last request to warn his brothers? A good question. The rich man wasn't denied his request because God was unwilling. 
He denied it because he knew it wouldn't work. As Abraham pointed out, if they did not hear from the words of Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead, as we know only too well today. According to Luke, if the poor were to have the good news preached to them, then the rich received a somewhat different message. The rich, the rich, rung, the rich young ruler, for example, who asked Jesus how he can inherit eternal life, is, was told that he was to sell all he had and distribute the money to the poor. When this made him sad because of his wealth, Jesus commented that the rich tend to have more difficulty entering the kingdom of God. Or like the rich fool, the wealthy tended to store their treasures in ever larger barns, but they can't take it with them when they die. While they store up treasures for themselves, they were not storing up treasures in heaven. This man had everything, money, power, knowledge, but realised too late everything he had built his life on had failed him. His wealth, gone. His achievements, they didn't matter. Even as a practising circumcised Jew was no help at all. If this man had taken time to listen to Moses and the prophets, that would have meant having to make inroads into his self-centred, self-indulgent, me, myself, I lifestyle where his needs came first, second and last, something he hadn't been prepared to do. Through the preceding verses, Jesus had been talking to religious people who thought they were good enough <coughs> excuse me, to stand before God. That by saying the right prayers, doing the right rituals <coughs> and singing the right hymns was all they needed. <coughs> the passage today is an antidote to that, to that way of thinking. It's a warning to religious people that they are in terrible danger of suffering the same torment as our rich man. So where do we stand in this story? Can you remember the old prayer we said before celebrating communion? We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. The prayer is saying, none of us by ourselves can be good enough. We sometimes hear the idea that good people go to heaven, Bad people go to hell. What this prayer and indeed the whole Bible says, that's rubbish. That's why this prayer continues. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table. That's why I want to finish with this prayer. A prayer that when it comes from the heart, then we won't follow that rich man. My God, for love of you, I desire to hate and forsake all sin, by which I have ever despised displeased you and I resolve by the help of your grace to commit them no more and to avoid all opportunities of sin. Help me to do this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And whatever we do this week, remember, keep a smile on our face. Be good, be careful. Bye for now.